What? Oh no, that, this is SCP Foundation stuff. Hi, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Today we're going to be looking at a video from a heavily requested YouTuber to react to called QXIR. This is the first time watching one of his videos, so I'm not entirely sure what to expect. But this video is called The Highest Radiation Dose in Any Human Who Actually Survived. Let's take a look. Imagine one day you're just going about your business as usual when out of the blue, bam, you're exposed to high doses of radiation. Hate it when that just happens. Just like that. You <laughs> hadn't even planned on being irradiated that day, but now you are. And in all seriousness, anything involving uh, radiation and radiological risks, in at least within a nuclear plant, are done by a uh, radiological protection specialist. Briefs you on the hazards, the conditions, you talk about odds of things going wrong, contingencies, things to do if things go south. And that's true in any radiological controlled area. Um, that would include labs and uh, even certain types of rooms in uh, medical facilities as well. So, yeah, the idea is to minimize this sort of thing happening. You're not expecting to be highly irradiated, but then suddenly being <laughs> highly irradiated. Ooh, oh, Actually, that's... I guess that's probably how it happens to the vast majority of people who get radiation poisoning now. In this time period that he's referencing with the Demon Core, briefings weren't what they were, risk management wasn't what it was, and the technology was very new. It's sad. But I think of it. But what separates today's subject from all those other unfortunate souls is that this man was subjected to the highest known accumulated radiation dose in human history. And he survived. And while this level of radiation may not have been fatal for him, what happened to this guy is really messed up and sad. And not in the so it mentions highest accumulated dose, so likely dose over time. Dose all at once is far worse than dose over time. So that's, I don't know exactly what he's alluding to yet, but um, that's probably why he survived compared to someone like you're in the Demon Core accident, got a whole bunch of dose right at once and then died. That you're probably thinking. In the USA in the 1940s, research and development was underway for the production of the first nuclear bombs. Famously, this research is known as the Manhattan Project. And sure enough, it did see the development of the first mm -hmm. nuclear bombs, the use of which is credited with ending World War II for the US and changing the world forever. It's interesting that it's often credited with ending the war. Um, changing the world forever, 100% um, agree, changes the idea of warfare, creating a weapon that is destructive enough that you want to think twice before using such a weapon. But as far as ending World War II, Japan was on its last legs anywhere. Whether it used conventional bombs or nuclear bombs, the war was going to end soon. Not to mention the Soviets declaring on Japan as well, and then Japan basically being surrounded on, on their home islands. Yeah, the, the war was going to end soon either way, but I digress. Even today, the power of nuclear weapons looms over the world. Is that a... <laughs> okay, that's like a... I thought that was like Mr. Banana Man or something like that, the little banana from peanut butter jelly time or something, but now it's a missile that got all bent. <laughs> Pretty funny. Threatening to destroy it. How many conflicts and wars do you think we've avoided just because the threat of nukes being involved was too great? On the flip side, how close do you think we've come to totally annihilating the planet with the things? And there you have the debate on should we get rid of or keep nuclear weapons? Sure, that's going to create a lively debate in the comments section, as it always does. This is important to consider because I wanted to think about how influential the people who worked on the Manhattan Project are to world history. In not too long, it will be 100 years since these mines came up with the nuclear bomb. And I'm going to say nukes are still going to be a huge influence on the world by then. That's Old nukey! <laughs> <laughs> one hell of a thing to create. These mines were on the cutting edge of science. But science is kind of a funny thing. Why? Well, imagine I asked you to create a nuclear bomb. I get that a lot in the comments, and <laughs> there's a reason why I don't answer that one. 
supplied all the materials necessary, don't ask where I got them from, <laughs> and provided a small workforce who will carry out your commands, don't ask where I got them from. <laughs> You're not locked up in a room or anything, you can go out and read up in the I library like this guy's or look style. things up on the internet or whatever. Okay, now how confident are you that you could build a working nuclear bomb given these very favourable conditions? Chances are, not very. It's a complicated... Again, I reserve my, uh, again, I will not comment on this matter. <laughs> you don't even know what you don't know. But the people on the Manhattan Project didn't have your advantages. They had to figure out everything by themselves. There was no internet. There wasn't even any nuclear bombs. How the hell were they supposed to create something that never existed ever? They were literally making the first one. It's always challenging making the first of everything, and especially something as dangerous with technology that is with only a rudimentary understanding of the technology compared to uh, what we have today. I do not envy their position. What I'm trying to say is, these people were probably pretty clever. Okay, now imagine I've given you plutonium. I've just handed it to you and said, here's it to some me. plutonium. Chances are you would be very cautious around this material. Well, it's radioactive, right? You might not know a lot about it, but that's all the more reason to be careful with it. So plutonium uh, emits uh, alpha particles, so fortunately a lot of it's not going to uh, penetrate the skin, but you, you still want to handle any sensitive material with, with care. You might not even want to be around it. This is the funny part of science, because back during the Manhattan Project's research, the effects of plutonium exposure were largely unknown. So those geniuses True. that invented the nuclear bomb, you know, the one that you couldn't even copy after decades of technological advancement, <laughs> these guys were going wild with plutonium, just getting silly <laughs> with it. They were unintentionally contaminating everything with it, accidentally inhaling the dust. Now that's the hazard for an alpha, for an alpha source. You inhale it, you're going to get a lot more dose on the inside. It can get, it can get pretty nasty. Taking it into civilian areas, one chemist even accidentally swallowed the stuff. For days after, it's his breath green. could be picked Just up by metal. radiation detectors from across the room. Now these guys weren't stupid. Plutonium had only just been discovered in 1940. The effects of it on the human body were not known. That doesn't mean they didn't think it did anything to you, they just didn't know what exactly right. it did. Having to handle so much of it led to some concerns in the Manhattan Project over what the effects might be. And so, a program was initiated with the aim of tracing the course of plutonium through the body. In 1944, early tests with rats indicated okay. plutonium concentrated itself in the bones and seemed to stay there for a long time. Manhattan Project leaders wanted more information about the effects on the human body. In 1945, approval was granted for human tests and three test sites were chosen. The Manhattan Project Army Hospital in Oak Ridge, Billings Hospital in Chicago, and University of California Hospital in San Francisco. Can you imagine volunteering to test an unknown substance going through your body and even the subject matter experts at the time aren't entirely sure what it's going to do to you? Sounds like you're going to be one of the D-class personnel from the SCP Foundation. Just saying. Over the course of these experiments, 18 people aged 4 to 69 were injected with plutonium. Wow. One of these people was Albert Stevens, a 58-year-old house painter who arrived at the University of California. Okay, I didn't recognize the photo, but hearing the name Albert Stevens is starting to ring a bell. California Hospital complaining of stomach pains. He was diagnosed with advanced stomach cancer. Like many of the test mm. subjects, Stevens was chosen because the illness he was originally in the hospital for Notes terminal. Interesting. Was terminal. He only had six months to live. This meant the experiments could be performed on him without much care for how it turned out. You know, he was gonna bite the dust soon enough anyways. So who cares? Mm. Oh, did I mention the subjects weren't told they were being exper- What? Oh no, that- this is SCP Foundation stuff with- wow. Okay, that- that wouldn't happen to- or, well, it shouldn't happen today. It's- it's not ethical. I hope it doesn't happen today. With unknown substance. Unknown patient. Metadon? Yep, Albert Stevens was injected with plutonium without his knowledge. 
That's a Why? nasty looking thread. Well, it was 1945. Very few people knew anything about plutonium, so it would have been difficult to explain all yeah. this to the average Joe in order to get his consent. More importantly, the experiment was tied to a top secret military project during the biggest and deadliest war in history. Yeah. Ethics weren't that high up on the priority list. Wow. Apparently, even some of the hospital staff involved with the experiments didn't know what was going on. A few days after being in... I know something with the Manhattan Project. The vast majority of the employees, I think, I don't know the exact number, but let's just say a million people at least did something to support the Manhattan Project, but very few people actually knew what it was or what it involved. Um, they just say, hey, it's some military research and development project, and that's kind of where the line stops. So I, this, this sort of thing being part of the Manhattan Project isn't surprising because so much of the staff that supported it um, direct, directly or indirectly didn't know what they were actually doing. With plutonium, Albert Stevens underwent surgery for his stomach cancer. Surgeons removed part of his stomach, liver, spleen, lymph nodes, <laughs> pancreas, and ribs that sound to stop effect. the spread of cancer. These were sent to the lab to study the effects of the plutonium. It was in this lab that it was discovered that Stevens hadn't got cancer at all, but a benign gastric ulcer. Oh, meaning all that's wow. <laughs> So they screwed up the diagnosis, and then they did the experimental... Wow. ...that was cut out of them was for nothing. Well, except furthering the studies of plutonium exposure, of course. To this end, Stevens also supplied urine and stool samples to be studied. And when Stevens recovered <laughs> from his surgery and was Doesn't discharged from the hospital, he continued to collect samples at their request, and workers would come by his house and pick them up. You see, Stevens was never told he didn't actually have cancer, and workers wow. were still collecting his samples for nearly a year after the surgery, under the pretense that they were researching his miraculous recovery. Although That's his crazy. family did become suspicious of the continued sample collecting, they thought he might have been sort of a guinea pig for a new form of cancer treatment that was highly effective. So not only did this guy have a significant portion of his insides removed, and not only was Poor he injected guy. with plutonium without his knowledge, but the reason for both those things was entirely bogus. Oh, I didn't even look at these other names. Bob Roberts, Outlook Good, something, is some hypochondriac, sure, and... Mike Tyson, Dermatophage. <laughs> the whole biting someone's ear off, sure. Yeah. With no cancer, that surgery should have never been performed at all. And with no terminal illness, Stevens was incorrectly chosen for the experiment. Oh, Not wow. that having a terminal illness would make this in any way ethical, because just in case I forgot to mention this, he wasn't told any of this. So what happened to That's Albert horrific. Stevens after being injected with plutonium? Well, not much actually. He lived for another 20 years. At some point, 10 wow. years after the injection, a radiologist noted rather marked degeneration much was of parts of Stevens' spine, consistent with previous findings that plutonium accumulates in the bones. Other than that, there doesn't seem to have been any noteworthy incidents regarding his health. He died in 1966 of heart disease at the age of 79. Upon analysis of his remains, it was found that Stevens... Typical lifespan, typical way to go in that time period. ...had accumulated an effective radiation dose of 64 sieverts, so on average... Wow, 64 sieverts, that is a lot. But it probably wasn't all at once, because 10 sieverts, an acute dose of 10 sieverts, you're dead. ...of three per year. The annual permitted dose for radiation workers in the US today is 0 0.05 sieverts. Wow, he actually got, this is actually a pretty good photo. The sort of, uh, the sort of protective clothing that I wore at the nuclear plant is actually quite similar to what, to what these guys are wearing. I, kudos to that, because a lot of people have a bit of a misconceptions over what sort of uh, clothing that radiation workers wear, but this guy, this guy got it right on the money. And three sieverts per year, that's, that's a lot around 60 times less than Stevens had to endure. A single dose of 4 to 5 sieverts would prove fatal about 50% of the time, and a single yep. dose of 10 sieverts would be more than enough to kill you. This means Albert Stevens survived the highest known accumulated radiation dose in history, and he didn't even know it. Now three sieverts, uh, even especially back then, not looking good, but with, with medical treatment, um, 
you can um you can't is survivable three sieverts uh, over the course of a year but 64 sieverts total that's crazy and especially um because this is alpha particles uh, we're we're talking about uh, plutonium both 238 and 239 are both alpha emitters and they have long half-lives too 80 something years and then 20 over 20,000 years so these ain't going anywhere even throughout your uh throughout your lifetime when it accumulates that's that's crazy it's just sitting in there getting him dose over time and to give you a sense of the scale 0.1 sieverts is the amount of dose it takes for increased cancer risk is on the order of millisievert. So the fact that he never got cancer or anything is, I was going to say miraculous, but this guy had a strange of bad luck. So is this guy, when it comes to radiation poisoning, is he both the unluckiest and luckiest person at the same time? Hmm. Or did anyone else? As you can imagine, this research was kept secret for quite a long time, until it was uncovered in the 1990s, wow. making Stevens' unintentional world record famous about 30 years after his death. Again, he had no clue any of this happened, nor did any of the other people unknowingly subjected That's to the crazy. human radiation experiments. But you know, a good number of them did have terminal illnesses and were dead not too long after anyways. Just as planned. It should be noted that none of the subjects died from the plutonium. So I guess you could say it all worked out in the end. Sure. Interesting that no one died from the plutonium. I'm actually kind of surprised by that. Some people got injected with radioactive the material without their consent, but is that so wrong? I mean, if it's for the advancement of science and the benefit of mankind, who cares if a few people get dosed with a little radiation, or a small amount of LSD, or even a pinch of our good old friend Agent Orange? And if the wow. powers that be who, let's not forget, were elected by you and I under the glorious tradition of democracy <laughs> as the most fit representatives of the good people were to, let's say, research the effects of subliminal programming through modern multimedia, would that be a tragedy? I mean, just imagine all the people who would benefit from such research. That would be worth a few harmless tests, right? That's crazy. I didn't know about these secret tests that seemed like they were right out of SCP Foundation type stuff. I mean, I knew New Manhattan Project was a secret, but I didn't know these these sort of tests were also lumped in with that with that sort of thing. That was crazy. I hope nothing like that's going on. I have no knowledge of it if it is. If you are support of peaceful, non-sketchy uses of nuclear technology, please join me on a journey to a clean, safe, sustainable nuclear energy future by liking, subscribing, and commenting. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.